What's up, everyone? Welcome to Famous Motion Pictures, where we'll be discussing how filmmaking, investing, and disruptive innovation all connect and how they relate to one another. I'm really excited today to talk about something kind of crazy. Um, it's absolutely not discussed in the filmmaking uh, kind of realm whatsoever, but it has everything to do with disruptive innovation, with how technology works, and that is um, the S-curve. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Humans are really, really bad at understanding exponential growth. It's not a concept that comes naturally to us. Our brains are wired to understand linear growth. Technology, on the other hand, doesn't work that way, particularly with disruptive innovation, with something new. So what you have here is a graph. On one axis, you have adoption, and on the bottom axis, you have time. So what that means is technology at the beginning of its life cycle is often inaccessible and too expensive for kind of major adoption for everyone to try out. You can kind of apply anything you want to this graph, any sort of technology that you could think of. The way it works is it starts out super inaccessible. Nobody understands what this is. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. It's kind of only for rich people. It's only for certain people to try. Maybe there isn't a lot of education for it, like tutorials and stuff. Maybe there isn't a lot of support. And then as adoption increases over time, it reaches a point that's called escape velocity. And what's happening here is it's mass adoption. The cost curve is declining so much that it becomes increasingly cheaper than its competing technology, than its legacy technology that maybe it's replacing. And then it levels out at the top. So if you look here in this graph, you can actually apply this to like any technology you can think of. So think of the television, like back in the 50s, so few people had a television when they first came out. They were prohibitively expensive and there really wasn't a whole lot on, right? Like the tele, like there just wouldn't be shows past like 10 or 11 o'clock at night and then there'd just be dead air throughout the night and then it would kind of come out back in the morning. And that lasted for some time. So what would happen is, you know, maybe people have like heard of a TV, but no one really knows what it is. And you're moving along kind of this exponential graph. It kind of stays low and it stays flat. And then all of a sudden, TVs kind of start to become a little bit cheaper. Maybe like one in four people have a TV. Maybe there's a few new shows on it. And adoption kind of takes off and it reaches escape velocity. So it's like nobody has one, nobody has one, nobody has one, nobody has one. People are starting to get them. People are starting to get them. Everybody's talking about them. This new thing is absolutely crazy. This is changing everything. Everyone loves TVs. And then when they reach the top of the adoption curve, it's like super boring. Uh, nobody cares anymore. It's like everyone has one. And if you look today, you know, you could go online and you could just like buy a TV for like, a hundred bucks. They've just become so accessible. Most households have more than one TV. We're all carrying kind of a, a TV in our pocket in a way because we have access to YouTube and we have access to other sort of channels and networks through our phones. So if you look at kind of this exponential graph, it's obviously very, very different from a linear graph. And this really trips people up when they think about technological adoption of certain things, right? And you can kind of apply this graph to like any sort of the uh, sci-fi concepts in disruptive innovation that we think of now, right? Like, so you might watch a SpaceX launch and people are orbiting the Earth and you're like, oh yeah, like that's really cool. But like, you know, it's going to be 20 years until we get to Mars. Or you might think of, uh, oh, electric vehicles. Oh, electric vehicles are like, we can kind of tell that they're the future. But if you think linearly, then you would kind of predict electric vehicle adoption would reach peak adoption by like maybe 2040. If you're looking at it linearly, if you look at it a straight line, you're looking at adoption over time, that line would make sense to you. But technological growth and disruptive innovation doesn't follow linear graphs. They follow exponential graphs. So another example when applied to filmmaking could be the transition from shooting on film to shooting on digital. It's that same exponential graph. The whole world is shooting on film. Nobody really knows what digital is. It's prohibitively expensive. Maybe the resolution isn't even that great. They create a lot of heat. They create a lot of noise. And there's only a handful of them. And you follow this graph and... It's like nobody has one, nobody has one, nobody has one, nobody has one. Maybe people start to talk about it. Maybe you start to see, oh, digital cinematography in the trades. Like, oh, is that the future? Well, maybe not. Like, I'm still shooting on film. Oh, film will live forever because that's the way we've done it forever. And then all of a sudden, the exponential curve starts to kind of take shape and it, it's going up and it's going up. And as that's happening, the cost curve is going down. Digital cameras are becoming a little less expensive, right? So now it's not just like uh, giant Hollywood productions and these like studio films are using them. Now maybe like higher budget indie films are able to uh, shoot on digital and experiment with that, right? Maybe like kind of affluent individuals are starting to be able to buy these. So that cost curve is declining. Digital cameras keep getting way, way more powerful every year. Everything from like dynamic range to like the options of like lenses and accessories, like all this stuff is starting to 
build around this new technology. And all of a sudden there's support for it. There's starting to be like videos and tutorials and education on how to use this new technology, which makes it even more accessible to people who want to like jump in and maybe don't know anything about it. So it's riding that exponential curve up eventually it reaches escape velocity, right? And like people are at a point where there's this convergence between the two graphs, like cost declines going down and adoptions going up. It's just as expensive maybe to shoot on film as to shoot on one of these digital cameras because like the cost of the camera ends up being just as much as renting a film camera and then all the film for your entire movie. You have this choice between one or the other. Do I shoot on film? Do I shoot on digital? We kind of saw that maybe in like the early 2000s, kind of mid 2000s, like a lot of Hollywood productions are still shooting on film. And then that starts to creep in, right? You have the Star Wars prequels shot on digital and then you have uh, David Fincher shooting Zodiac on the Viper. The whole thing is in 1080, but the technology is affording all sorts of new processes. Maybe you're able to do more takes more quickly and you don't have to reload a film camera. You don't have to like deal with a lab and then there's all these options. Now shooting on film is starting to become really, really expensive. No independent filmmakers are going to consider shooting on film at all. The DSLR came out and now people are buying those for like two or three thousand dollars. So you're kind of, you're writing this cost curve down and you're writing adoption up and all of a sudden there's all these YouTube videos and there's resources and there's education and stuff on like how to shoot digital and like what that means and like how the file formats work and stuff. So like people are learning and there's communities and there's the sharing of knowledge and all of a sudden you reach escape velocity. And once you reach escape velocity, there's really no going back. And you ride that exponential curve all the way up, that curve of adoption over time. And then it, it plateaus at the top. Now everybody shoots digital. Shooting film is like just something that rich people do or affluent filmmakers, right? Like Christopher Nolan or, or Quentin Tarantino. I don't have the option of shooting film. I have super eight cameras and I have a 16 millimeter film camera and it's crazy expensive to buy this film. And then you have to find a lab that's still around that will be able to do it. I'm a millennial. So like, I didn't even learn how to cut film on film. That's actually my nightmare for me as an editor. I see these making ofs, you know, you watch uh, behind the scenes stuff. There's all these strips of film hanging from the ceiling. It gives me like heart palpitations and like I start to get like cold sweats because I would have no idea how to cut on film. I didn't learn how to do that. And I'm actually kind of glad that I, I didn't have to learn how to do that. It's a legacy way of doing things. I want to be able to, to do things faster than I could even process them, right? Like I want to be able to experiment very quickly with ease. And I don't want something that should take five seconds to take five minutes. Like I want to be able to work as quickly as my imagination is able to create. And adoption has happened, right? And it's like totally boring now. Everyone has a digital camera of some capacity, whether it's your phone or a DSLR or a digital cinema camera, like a Blackmagic camera or the Red or the Alexa. It's just become industry standard now, and it actually becomes a production. It becomes this challenge to shoot on actual film, to shoot on 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter, something that's very, very expensive that only a few people could afford to do. The reason why I'm talking about this in this video is because you can kind of apply this to like any new technology that you're starting to uh, hear some buzz about. Maybe you're like reading about it on like Reddit or like in the news or in the trades. Maybe you've heard something about crypto. Maybe you've heard something about NFTs. Maybe you've heard something about these new technologies. And if you're thinking of yourself, um, you know, this is something else. It's not really the future of filmmaking. Really consider all the different technologies and how quickly everything has been adopted. You can apply this S curve, this graph, this adoption over time to pretty much any technology, right? Like you could look at computers, right? Computers used to be the size of buildings. You were to tell somebody like back in the sixties that like one day everyone would have a computer in their pocket, they would absolutely laugh at you, right? You would be like, you would be laughed out of the room. So if you look at the adoption of computers over, you know, the past several decades, they follow that exact same S curve where, you know, they're super expensive. They're way too power intensive. They're slow, they're clunky, they're inaccessible. No one knows how to use them. That happens, right? Innovation starts slow. And then all of a sudden you reach escape velocity, that S curve starts to take shape. All of a sudden people are starting to get them, right? You know, like maybe uh, some households in like the early nineties started to like, you would have a family computer. Like I know growing up, we had a family computer. So we had one computer in our living room that everybody used. And that sounds like really weird today, especially for like Gen Z's who have access to like computers in their pocket. We had more TVs in our house than we did computers because the TV is older and the computer was newer. And then I bought a computer when I was in high school. Actually, I bought my first computer when I was in grade seven with my own money from part-time jobs and summer jobs and stuff like that. I had saved up for like a year and a half and I had a big envelope full of cash that I hid in a box in my closet in my room growing up. I just bought my own computer in grade seven. And I know that seems like totally crazy to people because like, you know, you have a, a computer in your pocket, you have a smartphone and this thing is like practically disposable. You get it and you use it for uh, you know, six months and then like the new be better thing comes out and you just kind of toss it away. But like that computer that's sitting in your pocket is like exponentially more powerful than anything that like I even had growing up. You have to remember that at one point, every single technology was brand new and nobody really knew what it was. 
and uh, people were starting to experiment and figure it out. So yeah, so I love to think about uh, disruptive innovation and these new technologies, things that I'm just hearing about for the first time and I'm starting to experiment with and no one really knows what the future is. Try to think about some of these technologies that you're just hearing about today and some of these new things and apply the S-curve to them and, and, and figure out like at what point will like mass adoption uh, take off and what exactly is needed to create that escape velocity where you ride the S curve up, right? It's usually cost. It's usually education. As soon as something starts becoming available and people start making tutorials and educational materials on like, hey, there's this new thing and it's really complicated, but I'm going to teach you how to use that. That's a good indication that that technology has the opportunity to be widely adopted. I like to think about the S curve and I like to apply this to like filmmaking technologies, um, but also technologies outside of filmmaking and try to figure out how all these things connect. I like to try to predict where things are going um, and try to get out ahead and be on the forefront. This also allows um, me to be an early adopter of things that one day might be totally mainstream and we might look back and say, I can't even remember a time where we didn't have this. So I don't know, hopefully that's kind of got the gears turning. Maybe maybe this video was like way too crazy, but it's just something that I'm really excited about. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you could think of like any particular technologies right now that we might find ourselves kind of at the bottom of the S curve that haven't been widely adopted yet, but like you're starting to hear buzz about things that are really exciting. I would love to read them. Maybe it's something I've never even heard of. But anyway, yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. And uh, you know, hopefully I didn't like melt your brain or anything or like bore you to death, but this is something that I'm super excited about. And like I said, if you're uh, psyched about disruptive innovation, if you're uh, excited about uh, the future of filmmaking, the future of technology and how they relate to one another, if you're interested in investing, uh, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel or consider smashing that uh, thumbs up button that really helps uh, promote the video to other people who are looking for this kind of content. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Because disruptive innovation is kind of the theme of my investment portfolio, but I use this curve to try to determine uh, whether or not a company's most exciting days are ahead of it. As an investor, I want to get in as early as possible while that company or that product is still at the bottom of their S-curve. That way, when that company or product reaches escape velocity, I could ride that S-curve all the way to Tendytown.